If you even slightly familiar with After Effects, you probably use 3D camera at least once. In this video, we're gonna create 3 viral high quality animations by using 3D camera. But first, let's watch the final result. AI is nothing like print. It's nothing like the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century. It's far, far bigger. There is a fundamental difference between AI and the printing press, or the steam engine, or the radio, or any previous technology we invented. The difference is, it's the first technology in history that can create new ideas by itself. Now to start any animation, first thing I do is create a composition. Then I will import a stock photo for our first scene and make it smaller. Before I mask in the image, I will add a triton effect and set the mid-tone color to dark orange. Now our main goal here is to create 3D look. To do that, we'll mask the image and separate it into three different layers. So to separate our first piece, I'll grab the pen tool and get as close to the edge as I can. The first part of the image I'm masking is the one closest to the waiver. Masking process can be a bit tedious, but trust me. The more effort you put in here, the more impressive your final animation will look. After finishing the first part, I'm gonna duplicate the layer and turn off its visibility. Then I will remove the mask from the duplicated layer and begin masking the second part. And for this part, we're gonna mask the garbage hills in the middle. And that will be right in the middle of the background and the first layer. Now, to create our background, we're gonna duplicate it again and delete the mask. For the background, I'm gonna include everything except the garbage hills in the front that I masked earlier. Perfect, all three layers are ready, so now we can create our main composition, which is gonna be a 9x16 vertical ratio. Then I select all the layers, move them into our main composition, and scale them down. Now we're gonna get into some 3D stuff, so let's go ahead and activate 3D for all the layers, and add in our second viewer, and use our custom view. Then we're gonna right click and add a new camera by default settings. Awesome, now let's reposition each of these three layers to create some depth. First, I'm gonna start with the background and place it around here. Then increase the scale until it fills the entire composition. Now for the second layer, let's scale it up to nearly twice its size so the camera can have some space for motion. Then move up and place it like that. And finally, for the first layer, let's place it very close to the camera and adjust its position, along with the other layers to hide any empty spaces. Great, now that we have our scene, let's go ahead and add a drop shadow to soften the edges. For the first layer, I'm gonna set the distance 190 and the softness around 800. Then add a drop shadow to the second layer as well. Set the direction upward and increase both the distance and softness values. Next up, let's import the menu to our timeline. You can also access all the assets and the project file from the link down below. After enabling 3D for the main layer, I'm gonna place it somewhere between the first and the second layers like so. Perfect. Let's add a lumetri color effect to the man so he looks more realistic. Then set the shadow value to minus 50. Now let's go ahead and add a deep glow effect and set the radius amount to 0.1. Great. Last thing we can do is add a drop shadow effect and some distance and softness to it. Now to get rid of this flat look, I'm gonna create a new light, change the light type to ambient with 100% intensity and light orange color. Then let's create an adjustment layer and add a lumetri color effect. Increase the saturation, exposure, contrast and white level and add a vignette to corners. And finally, let's add a noise effect and set it to 12. With that done, we finished the color correction and created a darker atmosphere. Now let's create a text layer and write our title. Center the anchor point, align the layer, enable 3D and place it right about here. We can also make our text look much better. To do this, I'm gonna change the color to light orange, then I will add a deep glow effect and set the radius 0.4. Finally, I will apply drop shadow effect and add some softness to it. Great, so now it's time to make our camera movement. Let's start by adding a null object and parent link our camera to it. Then I'm gonna switch the second view as a custom view to get a better angle like so. I'm gonna move the playhead to second 5 and add a position keyframe then go back to first frame and move the position to the left. Even now it's looking amazing. Let's start apply easy to our second frame and after zooming the dot in the graph editor, here's the final zoom. I will also reposition the first layer so the corners don't show up during the camera movement. Perfect, now we can make the zoom in movement with our camera. First, I will add a position keyframe in the middle of the scene, then at the 5 second mark, I will change the Z position and zoom in as much as possible between the title and the man. Now when we play our scene, you will notice that there is some emptiness between the layers. To fix this, we're gonna reposition our layers, but first, we need to be sure our final camera moment. So we don't need to set it again. To do this, we're gonna make our final step and zoom it out the camera moment. To hide the empty places, I will add a position and skill keyframes for both the first and the second layers. And adjust their placement according to the camera moment until we get the perfect result. And this will be the final step for the first scene. 
So our first scene is finished up and now it's time to get into our next scene. First, let's create a black solid for our background. Then I'm gonna add a 4 color gradient effect. I will set the first color to dark gray, the second and the third colors to brown, and the fourth color to rich brown. Let's start by selecting our rectangle mask and creating rectangle here. Let's go ahead and increase roundness something like 30. Then we're gonna duplicate our rectangle mask, turn off the fill, and enable the stroke with a white color and a width of 2 pixels. Perfect. Now I'm gonna create a new rectangle mask and set the roundness to 20. Let's right click and open a new solid layer with an orange color. Now we're gonna duplicate our little rectangle mask and enable the fill. We're gonna use it for the track mat. And to do this, let's click toggle switch modes and connect our solid layer to the rectangle tool that we just created. Let's right click to our solid layer and pre-composite. So we can add a footage inside of the rectangle mask easily. So what I wanna do is, I wanna see this view and inside of the composition at the same time. To do this, we're gonna lock the view panel and double click to our composition. Then, we're gonna move second view panel right here and voila. Great. So let's import our GIF footage for the AI directly into the composition and place it like this. After setting the position of the footage, let's change the blending mode to darken and apply the change the color effect. To remove the black background, set the first color to black and select hue, lightness and saturation. To increase the duration of the GIF footage, I'm gonna duplicate it several times. I will select all the layers, right click, go to keyframe assistant and choose sequence layers. Once we enable the overlap, the layers will automatically line up in the timeline. Now let's go back to our main composition and add the text for this box, which is AI. Choose a nice looking font, increase the size and position it like this. Then we're gonna add the gradient ramp effect for the our text so it can look way better. We're gonna set the first color to light orange and the second one more darker and position the gradient points like this. Let's also add a deep glow effect and set the radius to 0.25. After finalizing our main text settings, it's time to add the invention date right above the footage. We'll set the set color to white, switch the font to Mount Serrat Semibold and position it right here. And finally, let's reduce our both rectangle mask opacity and set it to 45%. With this being done, we finished our box design. Before pre-composite, I'm gonna change the label color and duplicate all the layers. So we can prepare all the other four box designs easily. So let's go ahead and pre-compose our layers and name the new composition to box one. From here, it's just repeating the same steps. Swapping out the footage, title, and the date for the each box. And when we are finished, we'll end up with five different boxes. All the footage and project files are available in the link down below. Feel free to check them out. So let's go ahead and enable 3D for the precoms and open the second view so we can easily see the position of all the layers. After creating a new camera, I'm gonna reposition all the boxes one by one with second view helps. Starting with the second box, I'm gonna position it right behind of the first one and adjust its size. That way, the camera movement gives it a nice 3D perspective. Now for the third box, we'll place it somewhere around here and move it closer to the camera to enhance the depth. After positioning the remaining two boxes here, we'll set our final camera angle. Then, I will fine tune the position of all the layers to make everything look even better. Great, everything is all set. Now let's go ahead and create our first movement. Let's select all the layers and add a position keyframe at 4 second mark. Then, go back to first frame and move all the boxes down one by one so they start outside the scene. To make it smoother, I'm gonna select all the keyframes and make it easy. And finally, change the speed amount of the keyframes in Graph Editor. With this being done, this is how it looks. But also, by adjusting the keyframe timings at the start, we can make it look even better. Now let's go inside of the composition and change the stroke color of the main rectangle. And add a deep glow effect by its default settings, so it can look much better. And I'm gonna apply the same setting for the other layers as well. Almost perfect, but not yet. Next, we're gonna add a light sweep effect and change the color something like light orange. To make it more invisible, let's increase the edge thickness and edge intensity. Reduce the sweep intensity, change the direction around minus 90 degree and add a keyframe. Then, let's go around 4 seconds later and change the direction around 20 degree. And finally, let's paste it for the other layers. You might notice that playing around with effects and spending more time on your animations can make your projects look much better. So, now it's time to make our camera movement. Let's start by adding a position keyframe here, then go back to first frame and zoom in by adjusting the Z position. Once we smooth it in the graph editor, this is the final result. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create our next camera movement. I'm gonna add an orientation keyframe here, then go one frame later and zoom in on the next box as much as possible. Finally, I will change the perspective by adjusting the orientation keyframes. Then after one second later, I'm gonna change the position of the camera slightly to make it look like this. 
Then I'm gonna move the playhead about 2 seconds forward and bring the camera right next to the box. And after zooming it out, here is how it looks. Now let's go ahead and set up our final camera moment. To do this, I will move the playhead 1 second forward and shift the camera up the box right above. You can take your time adjusting the camera, just keep going until you find the perfect angle. After adjusting the camera positions, we zoom it out inside the graph editor and here is the final result. Finally, let's enable the depot field and set the focus distance to where the pair composed layer is. Then reduce the aperture level and add a keyframe. Adjust it for the next angle until the box in the center is nice and sharp. After finishing all the process, finally let's create an adjustment layer and make the scene even look much better. First, we're gonna add vignette and set the amount 44 and angle of view is 45. And also, I'm adding noise effect and set it to 12. With this being done, we finished our second scene. You can compare your own project with the one I shared in the link below. Now, it's time to get into our final scene. For this scene, I'm gonna use the same background that we created with 4 color gradient effect. So, let's turn on proportional grid and start by selecting our rectangle mask. Turn off the stroke and using a white fill, draw a rectangle right here. Let's make our view panel bigger so we can see what's happening in more detail. First, I'm gonna set the roundness to 17 and add the gradient rumble effect to our rectangle. Let's change the first color to orange and the second one to something darker. I'm gonna place the first color point here and the second one at the bottom of the rectangle. Then, let's add a deep glow effect and set the radius to 0.3. With this in mind, let's open scale and disable constraint proportions, so we can control the size both horizontally and vertically. At the first frame, adjust the vertical scale to 32 and add a keyframe. And around here, set it to 167. After selecting both keyframes, set them to easies and smooth them out in the graph editor. So, let's go ahead and duplicate our rectangle 4 times and place them one by one in the scene with the help of the proportional grid. Then select all the layers in the timeline, open the scale at the 7 second mark, start reducing the scale for the layers at the corners and set it to 90. And for the other two layers, set the scale to 110. And let's increase the scale of the center one and set it to 190, so it stands out more. Next, select all the rectangles and turn on 3D. Now, I'm gonna create a new camera, switch the two wheel layout and change it to custom. And we are ready to change the positions. From starting the corner ones, let's adjust the Z position to around 260. Then select other two layers and move them back as well. A value of 180 will give it a great look. As you can see, our layers are a little bit too high after adjusting the Z positions. To fix that, let's move them to the right place at the first frame. Awesome. So let's go ahead and create a new circle shape layer on top of the main line. After align it to the center, let's change the fill color to black and for the stroke, we'll choose a dark gray and set it to 14. Then send it behind the other layers in the timeline. After enabling the 3D, let's move it a little bit higher. Then select the ellipse tool and make sure tool creates mask is checked. The main reason we are masking this part of the ellipse layer is to give a more realistic shadow. So let's invert the mask and set the mask feather around 60. By playing our mask, we can make it look much better. With this being done, let's create a new text layer and write AI inside of the circle shape layer. Then add a deep low effect with a radius of 1 and place it right here. I'm also gonna activate 3D for the text and send it behind the lines. Then parent it to circle shape layer so we can control it as well. Great, now let's add a new position keyframe to the circle shape layer at the end of the scene. And at the first frame, let's move it right here. Let's select both keyframes and make it easy ease, then zoom it out in the graph editor. To make the text look shiny, we're gonna add light race effect. And move the center point right middle of the text and let's also reduce the intensity to 54. Then let's go to the first frame and move the light ray center point where the text layer is. Let's smooth out the keyframes so it can slide with the exact same timing as the text position. Perfect, now we are almost done but here comes the important part. First, I'm gonna select the camera and go to first frame and add position keyframe. Next, move the playhead to end of the scene and zoom in on the main line. After zooming out the camera movement in the graph editor, we'll enable the depot field and make sure the focus distance is the right place during the move. When everything is done, we can slightly extend the other lines so they can also look much better. And finally, we'll create a new adjustment layer, add a noise effect and set it to 12. Then add a vignette and play with the settings until we're satisfied with the result. And that's it, you made it to the end. I really hope this tutorial helped you improve your skills and gave you some fresh ideas for your own projects. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, subscribe for more and drop a comment if you have any questions or just wanna say hi. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.